something different today. I'm just leaving the South Bank Center, um, Elizabeth II Hall. What am I doing here? Well, I was here for, uh, for this actually. Can you see that? So that is the self-publishing live conference. And uh, self-publishing, as you may have guessed from that, is to do with books. Now, some of you hopefully will know by now that I have actually last year wrote my first book, my first novel, something I've been wanting to do for a very, very long time. Isn't it beautiful? Look at this beautiful sunny day here on the side of the River Thames. So I thought I'll just take a little walk before I head back. But anyway, I wrote the ULES files, which I thought was very appropriate considering everything that I was covering last year, um, primarily ULES. And, um, you know, it's been very well received. The reviews have been fantastic, you know. Sales could be better, that's up to you guys, but the reviews have been fantastic. And actually, talking to some of the other authors that were here today, um, who've also gone down the self-publishing route, and have also put their books on Amazon, um, I feel like I've actually done better than quite a lot of them in terms of the reviews for my first book. So that was quite heartening, actually, and quite encouraging. Will there be more? Well, that's the big question, isn't it? And um, should there be more? I think, actually, it's probably an even bigger question. Let's get into that. So, when I talk about authoring a book, to be honest with you, as some of you will know because you see the Star Trek badge on my jackets and what have you, and I'm wearing one on here as well, a little pin. Um, I, I am a huge science fiction fan. And I always thought that when I wrote my first book, and I have actually had a few false starts in the past, that it would be uh, pure science fiction. And that was always actually my intention. Um, but they do say, don't they, that write what you know about. And what I know about is uh, cars and motoring and automotive, because as an automotive journalist, content creator, I've been covering cars for, well, this is my 35th year. So, <laughs> quite a long time. So, uh, it became obvious to then focus on that aspect of writing and focus on, you know, uh, automotive. Hence the ULIS files. But when I think about where to go next, although next, to be honest with you, I am currently working on something. I am currently working on another book. It's not actually, I, I know some of you have asked me if I'm doing a sequel to the ULIS files. Again, I'm not sure yet. It's kind of down to you. I mean, if you guys want a sequel to the ULIS files, then you have to let me know because then that will motivate me to do it. In the meantime, I'm working on a collection. I've been writing short stories for years, decades, you know. Um, so I thought what I would do is compile some of those and put them together with some new ones as well. And many of those are going to be science fiction, but, but a lot of them are also going to be automotive related. So it's probably not the right thing to do. It's probably not the right way to do it, especially from what I've learned today. But, um, but I'm going to do it anyway, because heck, why not? But then the question, the bigger question that came to my mind today, talking to people about genres and talking to some of the other authors that were here and what they're working on. Thriller writing seems to be a big thing, so probably I went in the right direction with that. Science fiction is also right up there. But when you break these things down, to specifically what are they looking at, and um, automotive doesn't come up a lot. Didn't meet anybody else that was writing anything to do with automotive. I did meet a travel writer that does overlanding in cars and bikes. So that's kind of automotive related, but that's, that wasn't fiction, that's non-fiction. And I think that, you know, it's, it's quite important for us, especially petrol heads, gear heads, car guys, car people, to have something like that. Because if you think about it, we don't really have much in the way of fiction that's purely aimed at the motoring community. And I think that as um, motoring, and I've talked about this in recent videos, as it becomes less and less emotional, and you know, it becomes more and more difficult to sort of portray the emotional, the emotional love of the automobile, the connection that we have with engines and octane and all the rest of it, then I think that you know, maybe it's becoming more paramount to, to actually uh, cast these things in stone, so to speak, you know, by writing them down, by putting them into books, by creating literature around them, right? And um, I think that at the moment what we have, if you think about it, we have movies. So we do have a lot of automotive uh, car related movies. 
including you know everything from you know uh, Smokey and the Bandit to Bullet. Yeah, you know, technically, although Bullet, the movie. The thing is, everybody says Bullet, but Bullet was a cop movie. It wasn't a car movie. It was a cop movie. It's just that Steve McQueen happened to be a car guy and ended up putting the best car chase sequence uh, ever filmed on that, into that film. Um, to be honest, if you've actually watched the rest of the film, I've watched the car, the car chase countless times. I have tried to watch, I have watched it a couple of times and it's quite difficult because it's quite a slow plodding movie um, as movies then were at the time, right? Check this out, look at that weirdo. You see that? There's another one here, there's a Mad Hatter there, look. Mad Hatter there. Anyway, I'm walking under the Millennium Wheel at the moment. Thought I'd head up towards Westminster. It's quite busy here actually, I guess because of the weather. So anyway, the point being that we've had that and we've had the Fast and Furious franchise, which to be honest, love it or hate it, it has really helped the whole culture of cars, the modified car scene, the street car scene, street racing scene, the underground scene. It's really been, you know, for 20 years now, for over 20 years now, you know, like I said, love it or hate it, especially the first movies were so spot on. And proper, proper car guy movies, they really were, you know, uh, nerdy to a point, you know. And, and, you know, even now the stunts got wilder, the, the heroes got super powered for some reason, I don't know. Um, and they got to space and they got ridiculous, but nonetheless, sometimes when it boils down to it, I mean, just to give you an example, and maybe a little bit of a spoiler alert here, but at the end of the, the previous movie, which of course is the first part of a two-parter, which seems to be a thing, right? Because the Mission Impossible is also, the last Mission Impossible is the first part of a two-parter. The last Fast and Furious is the first part of a two-parter. So at the end of that, first part of a two-parter um, when Diesel says you know you took everything away from me but you forgot to take away the car and you know even at that point it's like a lot of people are like what's he talking about but car guys would be like yeah exactly never take away a guy's car right so but the, as I've made, just, I just mentioned there it's the end of the franchise you can't blame it I mean they've been doing this for 20 plus years so they're all getting a bit they're not they're not, they're not the young street racers they were <laughs> once upon a time so that franchise is coming to an end there don't seem to be any many movies out there that are going to be focusing purely on automotive or cars um, there is no Smokey and the Bandit or anything like that um, and TV shows were the other big thing where we used to I mean as, as somebody when I was younger that's where I got a lot of my car interest and car culture from you know from the new Avengers which is not the Marvel I mean this is British TV show where I fell in love with John Steed's Broad Speed, Jaguar, XJC, to obviously Knight Rider, to every car show. Every, so every show, every detective show had a car in it. You know, Magnum had a Ferrari. Uh, everything, Rockford Files, Miami Vice, Testarossa. I mean, everything had a car in it, right? But modern shows don't do that anymore. I mean, the cars are almost part of the character. The cars were always there to actually consolidate the personality of the main character. But modern TV shows don't really do that anymore and um, neither do movies. I mean, again, the, the, in the Bullet, the Mustang cemented the character of Lieutenant Frank Bullet. Um, it is Frank Bullet, isn't it? Yeah, I think so. Um, so Steve McQueen. So it was part of his personality, it was part of the character. And cars were often used like that, because also because cars themselves, let's be honest, to be fair, cars in those days, they all had their own personalities and characters too. That is less the case now, unfortunately, um, as cars get quite similar and many people would argue soulless. So cars were used as, you know, characters and plot devices in movies and stuff like that. We're getting less of that. So the one franchise that we've got, like I said, Fast and Furious is dying. James Bond is going to be rebooted. For all I know, he may not be having um, uh, an Aston Martin in the future. They might just give him an Oyster card and say, right, use, use public transport. There's been funding cuts. Labour government's coming. So I wouldn't be surprised, you know. So, so what's left then? Well, what's left is us, right? So we can start to encapsulate some of the excitement, some of the fantasy, some of the emotions, some of the sentiment that we feel around automotive and cars. So, puts me in a real dilemma because I wanted to write science fiction. But now increasingly I'm thinking that actually I'm almost duty bound 
weird word to use, yeah? I'm almost duty-bound to actually write more automotive-related fiction, motoring fiction. And the ULES files, although it was named the ULES files, wasn't actually that much to do about ULES. It was set in the future, three years after ULES. And if you saw the tagline, it said, you know, um, in the war on motorists, every mile could be a lie. So it was all about the war on motorists. And the action kicks off when uh, road user charging paper mile is announced in London, and then mayhem happens, you know, and that's, it's, it's just a action, full action, car chases, cool cars, all that sort of stuff. So that's really what, you know, the ULIS files was about. And I guess that if there is going to be a sequel to it, it would have to be along the same lines, right? It would have to be the same theme. And I have some other ideas as well um, to look at certain themes and certain ideas that are very specifically motoring and automotive related. Check it out. Whilst I'm doing this vlog for you, I'm also giving you a tour of London. So you can see River Thames. We saw the Millennium Wheel, which is just passed, which is, I don't know, you can probably make it out over my right shoulder. And then we're walking up to Parliament, obviously. Parliament, obviously, nobody's in right now because <laughs> they've all been made redundant, effectively. Until next month, until what? How many, actually? Well, not, not many days, about five days. Uh, no, ten, just under 10 days, actually. Oh, we have a new government. But anyway, I had a long day of sessions with this uh, self publishing show. Fantastic event, really eye opening. Learned a lot of stuff, which is what I was hoping for. Got a lot of information. And uh, not only that, but it was great to chat to other authors who were sort of in different, um, different points in their career graph, if you like, and um, get some feedback on what they're doing and what the market is like, stuff like that. And I couldn't help, and actually I had no plan to make this video. I've got no notes or anything like that, but it's just the thoughts that came into my head as I was listening to the, to the seminars and the conferences and chatting to people. And saying that actually, yes, there is an opportunity here to create everlasting fiction, if you like, that revolves around automotive. Because automotive, as we know it, motoring, as we know it, it may not last much longer in the way that we know it. So then the only way that we can revisit it, remember it, relive it, will probably be through friction. So let me know what you think about that. Let me know what you, if you're doing anything about that. Let me know what you think I should do about that. And uh, hopefully, I'll catch you all soon again on uh, Amazon. Amazon Kindle Publishing. No, no, roundcarguy.com YouTube channel. Stay tuned. Let's keep up to date with everything that's happening. Yeah, I look forward to hearing your views. Check this out guys, it's my book, it's my first novel and it's written for car fans like you. It's a fun political action thriller, it's full of cool cars and spectacular action. Get your copy now at Amazon.com. Shout out time guys, thank you so much. Hey, if you enjoy my content, why not get involved? Buy me a coffee. You can do that at either of these links. Or if you're watching on YouTube, buy me a thanks or take out a membership. It all helps, it really does.